Amen. You may grab your seats. Thank you, band. <laughs> Who needs a gym membership? Yeah. If you worship properly, it's, it's enough. It's enough if, if you come to church. How are you doing? Okay, it's good to see you. The first row is doing good. The rest uh, of you is looking at me and wondering why is she asking questions. We didn't come here to speak. We didn't come here to talk back. So, well, welcome to KDM. Uh, in this church, we talk back. So, hopefully, you will be uh, participating in the message and responding and actually speaking back to me. It's good to see you. Uh, the weather is beautiful outside, isn't it? It's gorgeous, you know. Uh, in Polish... In Polish, February starts with the same letter as November. So we're just saying that there is some confusion between the two because it's more of a November weather than the February. But well, what can you do? But it's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be worship Him. It's good to, uh, it's good to be worship Him. That was good English. It's really good to actually give Him praise because He's worthy. Amen? And, and this time, it's not uh, a moment when we actually stop praising him because uh, this is our lifestyle. And when the word is preached, we believe this is also a time when God is moving and when the spirit is touching our hearts. Because this is why we are also here to be transformed, to be changed, so that we can be more like him. Amen? Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you have given us your word to speak to us, to show us your love, but also to teach us your ways. And I ask you to open our hearts and minds to be able to receive what you want us to receive, to learn. I ask you to anoint my mouth, to use me for your glory and help us to get a hold of all these truths that are in your word so that our lives can be a blessing that you have told us about and that you have promised for us so that we could live to the full of everything uh, that you have prepared for us. Amen. Amen. We are in our serious uh, kingdom economy. I had to think for a while, you know, what, what was the title of it. And we're talking about money. And usually when you talk about money, especially in the church, that is a big problem for, for some people. Uh, generally, talking about money is a problem for people. And it's interesting because this is something that really touches every single one of us. And majority of us have issues with the money because we either have not enough. I don't know if we have too much. That's usually not an issue. And as we heard the first sermon, always those who even have more, they want to have even more. But it's, it's an issue that is touching every single one of us. Every day, in every situation. And yet, talking about money seems to be kind of like, ooh, you know, these are the topics you don't talk about. Usually the topics that people say you don't talk about it are the ones that cause the most problems in our lives. So maybe we should actually start talking about them. I don't know. But we want to talk from the perspective of the kingdom. Because we believe that just like in every other area, in this area, we need to know the principles that God has set for us. Because they help us to have a life that God wants us to have. You know... God gave certain principles, certain rules, not to make our life miserable or to make us struggle, but actually to set us, set us up for victory. And he wants us to live in the fullness of everything he has prepared for us. And so that's why we talk about it. And as we heard before, also, if you haven't heard the messages, I encourage you to go on our YouTube because all the messages you can hear there. Uh, God is about our heart. And the money, actually, they, th this, this topic, it speaks about our heart. Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so this is very important. And today, I have the privilege to talk to you about giving. And uh, that's another topic people don't want to talk about. Uh, so I'm really happy I can talk about it. And I want to start with tithing. You know, if you've been in church for a while, you probably have heard the, the term. Maybe you even uh, know what it means. Or maybe you have a confusion about it because there is lots of different theories about tithing. So what is tithing? What, what the word actually means? Well, tithing, the tithe, is actually 10%, the tenth of everything that you receive. 
And let's read the Word of God. We're going to start with Malachi, and we're going to read chapter 3, and we'll start from the verse 10. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil and your vine in the field shall not fail to bear to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. And another portion of scripture is from Proverbs 3, and last week we heard it as well. It's Proverbs 3, 9, we start with 9. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty, and your Vats will be bursting with vine, wine, vine, wine. Yeah, too many V's and, and W's. We're getting there. So, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. The Bible talks about tithing. And this is a principle that God has given us all. And in churches, oftentimes people say, ah, but it's the Old Testament. You know, there are certain principles that God has given us, and they are for all times and for everybody. There are principles that are only for some time and only for a uh, for certain group of people. But there are some universal principles, and that's one of them. And we may think that it's not this way, because we always think this is the law of Moses. If you've been in church long enough, you know what it means. If you don't, just forget it. The thing is, it's not. And even Jesus talks about it. He was talking to the Pharisees, rebuking them about forgetting something again and not doing something they should be doing. And he actually said that you've been tithing on the smallest things and you forgot about something very important. And then he says, you shouldn't have stopped doing that, but also remember about that. He confirms this is something we should be doing. Tithe is a universal principle, and it does not start with Moses. You can read about it earlier. We can, t we can go back to Abraham that gave the tenth uh, to Melchizedek. But also, if you read closely, Cain and Abel. Abel gave the first fruits, the tenth of what he had, and God blessed it. This is a principle that God has given us. It's universal, and it's for us today as well. And you know, the thing is that the tithe, it's not actually giving to God. It's giving back to God. And the back is very important. Because if you believe that God is your creator, that you have been made in his image, then everything that you have actually is from him. You may work with your hands or muscles or with your head, and make money because of that. But the ability to do that is given to you by your, by your God. So he has given you the talents. He has given you the abilities. He has given you the, uh, actually even the health. So if he is the author of your life, then everything that you have comes from him. So you're not giving to him. You are giving back to him. And he asks you only to give him back 10%. Why? To actually see if you trust him. That was last week's message. If we trust him. The Bible says, and in Malachi we read, that it's a, it's a test. It's the only passage in the scripture that says, that God says, test me. He, he actually gives you permission. He, he even urges you, test me. It's a test of God's faithfulness, but it's also a test of our heart, who we trust. Do we trust our account or do we trust God? Do we trust our jobs or do we trust our God? Where is my trust? And you know, the test is never to show you how bad you are, 
because when we leave the education system, this is the idea of test we have. It's just to prove how bad I am. No, that's wrong. And definitely that was not God's idea for test. Test is always to set you up for what he has prepared for you. It's for what's expecting you. And God is promising here. He says, test me if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and put down for you a blessing until there is no more need. There is a promise. If you're faithful, it will be rewarded. So tithing, it's a principle. It's a universal principle of giving 10% of everything that we have, of what we receive to God. You know, I've learned this principle very early when I just give my life to God and I heard about it, I decided, okay, I'm going to do that. And that was in time when my income was huge. I was giving English lessons to one girl that somehow thought I was good at it. I have no idea how come she came up with that idea. And I had a lesson once a week and I made a huge amount of money, tens water. That's a lot of money. It was 100 years ago, so it was maybe more valuable than now, but still. And I remember I had a special box, and to that box I was always putting one's water from the ten, because that was my tithe. And then when I was going to church, I was giving this. It was funny because you know one's water is a coin, so it was kind of weird. But I decided if God says so, I'll do it. And since then, I never stopped. I never stopped, because I believe this is a principle that God has given me, so that He can bless me and I can see His blessing in my life. And I don't give when I have enough only. I give always. And even if the situation was difficult, that was always our priority. And it still is in our family. The first 10% goes to God. And, you know, Bible talks about different things, animals and crops. Today, I hope none of you is earning um, goats for what you do if you do you could actually make a business as well but I think that most of you uh, earn money for what you do so that's why we talk about money back then economy looked a little bit different and the way people functioned but it's always about giving the 10% of what we receive and it's the first percent that we do not after I see if I have enough, but the first one, because this is where I trust. Because if you wait until the end and you've paid everything, you've, you've done what you needed to do, and like, oh, I have some left so I can give, that's not, that's not actually giving God, showing him that you trust him. It's always the first. And this is something very important also. The Bible says... Bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. If you're a part of a church, of any group, if there is a spiritual home that you're part of where you're being fed spiritually, this is where you bring your tithe. We're not tithing to NGOs or un other places. That's beyond the tithe. The tithe belongs to the house of God. This is the principle that God gave. And this is something we should also follow. It's very important. Because that's his way of providing for the church to be able to function. And this is the principle that he said. So we shouldn't change his rules, you know. We don't have a problem with, with certain principles that also God actually put in motion like gravity. I love using that example. It's not that one day you decide, okay, today I'm going to jump off the highest building in Krakow, uh, former Skeletor, so-called, and today I'm going to fly. Like, you know it's stupid, right? And yet with the principles that God put in place in the Bible, so often we're kind of like, ah, are you sure? Are you sure? Is it really like that? Seriously? Well, yes, yeah, seriously. Tithe is giving back to God what actually belongs to him it's showing that we trust him it's honoring him and it's actually 
something that sets us up for what he prepared for us because he promised blessing and our faithfulness will always be rewarded so i encourage you test him and it's not me encouraging you he says so test me test me but remember if you want to test him it's not enough to do it once it needs time it always requires time all good things require time if something comes quickly I would wonder about the quality. So this is tithe. And then there are offerings. Often when we have the time of uh, giving, we say we're going to collect our tithes and offerings. And this is the moment where giving starts. Because tithing is not giving. It's giving back to God what belongs to him. Now, when we talk about offerings, this is giving. And this is where generosity starts. This is where you actually give as an offering to God. This is also a sign of worship. So we give and we give offerings and we are generous because our God is generous. And there are different, different places in the Bible that talk about it. And there is a, in Proverbs 11.24 in message uh, translation. I love it because it's really beautiful. It says the world of a generous gets larger and larger. And the world of a stingy gets smaller and smaller the bible encourages us to be generous people to be generous and in second corinthians somewhere in my shiny cards i'll find it in second corinthians 9 there is a whole passage about giving when paul talks to corinthians but it's a beautiful place with full of different principles but it shows us very clearly that God wants us to be generous. God wants us to give. And in chapter 9, and we start with verse 6, this is what it says. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bounty bountifully, where is the accent in that word? I don't know. Will also reap bountifully. So you, 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 in your heads you can say it properly. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart. Uh, heart or her heart not reluctantly or under compulsion for God loves a cheerful giver and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times you may abound in every good work as it is written he has distributed freely he has given to the poor his righteousness endures forever he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness you will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way which through us will produce thanksgiving to God we are to be generous we are to give that's why we do give offering and you know this is something that I've learned also very early and this is something that I do because I believe my God is generous and I want to be generous as well and we give offering to the church that's one of the, the places. Why? Because we as a home, as a church family, we also want to bless others. And because of your generosity, whole year last year, we were able to help and support the refugees. We were able to give so much help that went to Ukraine. Uh, we were able to give to a church in Cuba that is building their own building. You know, because of your generosity, this is why we give. This is why we give offerings. But we also should be personally people who are open to be generous and to give. And in every single area. Because money only shows the condition of our heart. If you're generous with your finance, you will be generous with everything else. If you're generous in other areas, definitely you're generous with money as well. This is how it works. And I believe this is beautiful when we as a church give and are generous in our giving because then people can see how beautiful and generous our God is because we are representing him here on this earth. And this passage that we just read, it actually talks about God wanting to bless us when he sees our hearts open, when he sees how we are willing to give, he will do the same to us. And he will bless us because that's his heart. You know, God gives us the principles 
not to make our lives miserable and hard and more difficult. He actually decided to give us certain principles to help us have a better life. And if we know him and we know that he's good, it's so much easier to see that. And we can understand that it's all for our benefit. And when Bible talks about giving, it often refers, often refers to sowing. And this is what we read just before. And, you know, probably none of you is a farmer or maybe there is a farmer here. But I think every single one of you at least saw in your life, maybe if not in the real life, at least on YouTube, what it looks like when you sow something. The problem is that on YouTube, they probably fast forwarded it. And so then it was like, kind of like you put the, the seed and it's like and that it grows. Well, in real life, it doesn't happen that way. Just, just so that you know. But you know there is a seed. You have to put a seed in something, usually some soil. And then you have to do some extra things. Like it's good if it's not in a dark place. Like this place wouldn't work. Uh, you need water. You need light. You know, all these things. Good temperature as well is helpful. There are, there are certain conditions that need to happen. But when we give, Bible says that this is our sowing. And I believe that with everything in our lives, these principles that Bible is, is giving us are so helpful and they can change our lives so that we can see the blessing of God, but also His heart and people can see His heart because it's all about that. And I don't have enough time to share with you everything, but I have just few simple principles that I believe are important for us to see how God sees the sowing. And the first one is that you reap what you sow. If you decide to sow carrots, I guarantee you won't reap apples. I guarantee you. You don't believe me? Test me. You reap what you sow. And so if you reap complaining, negative talk all the time, saying how bad the world is, guess what you're going to be reaping? If you sow something, then you'll reap the same thing. And so if you sow, you're sowing financially, you will reap financially. God will find a way. You know, he has his ways. Very mysterious sometimes. But we need to learn. And I believe that if you decide, if you choose to actually trust him, and you do it with your heart in the right place, with the right attitude, he will help you to see that. When I was um, way, way younger, um, I had a one-time opportunity. It was really a long time ago. Uh, I, was, I used to translate a little bit before. And so I was invited to translate for the uh, bishop or superintendent of our movement. They were going, him and his wife were going to um, the U.S. for a conference. And so uh, I was invited to go there as an, their interpreters, interpreter. And so somebody covered the whole cost for me because I couldn't afford it. So they, they, they paid for the flights and my time there. And going there, for me, it was a challenge because uh, back then uh, the exchange rate, the Polish zloty to dollar was... Uh, similar to what's now maybe a little bit higher but what we were making was way 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 less and so I had some pocket money but it was very limited and so when I was there I uh, went for a church service and it was before the the first service first Sunday after we arrived and I had a about two weeks ahead of me but I really I, I felt I should do this and I knew I should do this I wanted to give when there was a time of offering, I wanted to give. So I took this money that I had. I'm like, okay, God. And I put it there. Not knowing what's going to be like. In my head, I had this conversation, of course. What it's going to be like later. I won't have any money. I'll have to rely on other people. And blah, blah, blah. You know, I have all these stories. And after the service, few people came to say hello. And I said, yeah, hello, hello. And then one person shook my hand. And in the hand was a, a, a bill. And it was like the note. You say the note or the bill. What do you say? Oh. You, note and note in Britain, bill in the U.S. or whatever. Okay. Yeah, the paper thing. Okay. So I, I am like, oh, was shocked. 
that was that was really shocking for me. But the second thing that was even bigger shock was that this was exactly what I put in. You know, that was a lesson that God gave me. Did he act like that again next Sunday? No. God never does the same thing again, just so that you know. But that was a lesson that I still remember now. He cares for me. If he, I trust him, he will find a way to provide for me. He will find a way to take care of me. And I have hundreds of stories of that. And if you don't believe me, we can meet for a coffee and I can actually sh share with you the stories of when we had miracles buying a house and when we had miracles thinking we need to sell a house to survive. When we had enough to live and when we had to sell everything that we had just so that we could survive. God was always with us and we trusted him. And I want to encourage you be the people that are sowing and expect that he will give you the harvest. Another principle is that God multiplies the so, uh, seed that you sow. And in Corinthians, the, in this verse, verse 10, we can read that he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. And, it, you know, we right, like to read all these spiritual things and just think that this is all for the spiritual things. No, it's for everything because everything is spiritual. You are a spiritual being and everything is spiritual in your life. And God wants to multiply the seed that he gives you to help you so that you could see the blessing that's in him. But there is a very important principle also in this one. He supplies seed for the sower and bread for food. So don't sow the bread because then you won't have anything to eat. And I guarantee you, if you sow the bread, not much will grow out of it. There might something be growing on it, greenish kind of, but not really something that you can then make a, out of it a bread or, or whatever else. Don't sow your bread. Be wise. You know, God wants us to be wise in managing our funds because this is what he has given us. So sow the seed. But know what is your seed and what is your bread. And yes, sometimes God asks of us to give more than normally. But if it's between you and him, he will take care of you. Even if you sow out of your luck, he will take care of you. But that needs to be in relationship with him when you are close, when you hear him. It's not because of your emotions or because somebody tells you so. It's because you know your God and you're sensitive to what he says. So be wise in what you do. It's like with giving. You know, we need to be giving. Never give from the credit card. That's stupid. Because you don't have that money. That's not your seed. So don't do that. Be wise. The third principle is that with what measure you sow, this is the measure you will reap. And it's in Luke 6 and verse 38 give and it will be given to you good measure pressed down shaken together running over will be put into your lap for with the measure you use it will be measured back to you Oi, i think i need to finish now uh, but you know it's not about the dollar value last week we heard the story of the widow that was giving very little and yet Jesus saw her and said she gave the most it's never about the amount it's always about the heart because you can give from what you have and you think it's little but if you give it from your heart because you believe because you trust him this is what pleases him this is what honors him and sometimes people may give out of their abundance but they give something that actually they don't even notice that they've given and it, it makes such a difference. It's always about the heart. So the measure you give is the measure you will receive. So always do it from your heart. As the Bible says also in Corinthians, because God loves the cheerful giver. And he always wants us to do it from our heart and with joy. And the last one is harvest needs time. 
nothing grows immediately, only on YouTube, not in real life. It always takes time. The farmers, when they sow seeds, they don't come and dig it out next day to check if it's actually properly growing. We need to give it time. And the same is with tithing. Just like with the offering, everything needs time. You need to be faithful through the time to see that actually this works. You know, um, a few months back, I had the unpleasant um, unpleasant opportunity, I don't know if I can say that, to discover what it means to have sciatica. If you don't know what I'm talking about, oh, how happy you are. If you know what I'm talking about because you know the name, may it never happen to you. If you know what I'm talking about because you had that, you know. For the first month, I was hardly moving. I was preparing breakfast sitting on the floor because I couldn't stand up. Uh, for the no another month, I started moving slowly a little bit. I had to go to the post office one day here, and it's about 200 meters away. It took me three stops. I had to kneel down because I couldn't walk. People were stopping on the street and going like, oh, can we help you? What do we do? I'm like, oh, you can't help me unless you carry me. Uh, it's four months now, and I can stand, I can walk, I can jump, and I feel really, really great. But when I could move a little, I started exercising. And I started doing the exercises, and I do them every single day, at least twice a day, every day. And today, I see results. But if after two days of those exercises, I would like, hey, it's not working, I'm not going to do it again, probably I would still be crawling. Because everything takes time. And the same is with the harvest. And in Galatians 6, uh, 9, there is a whole passage actually that talks also about giving. And from the verse 7, it says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever one sows that will uh, he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Uh, so then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. And you know, it's not just talking about the spiritual thing. Because as I said, everything is spiritual. And money is very spiritual. And if you don't believe me, listen to the first message from the series that Pastor Josiah had. Uh, it's very spiritual. And God cares about how we think about money and how we treat money. And it says here that for if we do not grow weary of doing good, in, of sowing, in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. In due season. There is time for everything in our lives. But if we commit to generosity, if we trust God, and if we'll be following His principles, if we'll tithe, give tithe, and if we'll give offerings, if we'll be generous people, we will reap the harvest. And God will bless us, just like He promised, because He said, test me. And He always promises His blessings for those who are generous, who are open with everything, with their lives. So I want to encourage you, be people that are generous. Be people who are learning the principles, because that will help you in your life. 